One of the biggest additions to iOS 17 this year is standby mode, whereby your phone can be turned into a kind of mini smart display. And honestly, at first, I didn't think that much of it, but as I've used it more, I realize it's a feature with a lot of potential. But in kind of an Apple fashion, it's not very intuitive. You need to know what you're doing to be able to get the most out of this. So in this short video, I'll show you everything you need to know. Okay, let's get into it. Standby mode kicks in when you have a phone running iOS 17 and connect your phone to power and rotate it on its side. It doesn't matter whether that's connecting to power using a cable or connecting to power using MagSafe or using a Qi wireless charger, the result either way is the same. And so long as you've enabled it in settings, which I'll show you how to do in just a moment, standby mode should kick in seconds after you've connected the phone to power and rotated it. You find the settings for this by opening settings and tapping on standby. Up at the top of this menu is the main toggle switch for standby itself. You'll obviously have to enable this if you want to use it. Below that, on the iPhone 14 Pro or 15 Pro models, you've got the always on toggle option. So this only works with iPhones that have an always on display, and it's a touch confusing because even if you enable this, the screen won't always stay on. Rather, your phone will try to intelligently work out when it should be on or off and turn off when not in use. Beneath that is night mode. Night mode is where the screen will display ambient lighting with a red tint to it, making it much less bright and distracting at night. Tapping into here, you can toggle this option on or off as you need to, and on a compatible phone, which I believe is the iPhone 14 Pro and 15 Pro range, you can also enable motion to wake, where the display will wake if it detects motion. Beneath that, you have show notifications. If you toggle this on, notifications will arrive on your iPhone based on whatever notification rule you've got set up for that time of day. If you toggle this off, notifications will be muted while in standby mode, with the exception of critical notifications. And finally, you can enable or disable show preview on tap only. With this on, you'll get a less detailed notification and the preview will only show when you tap on it, which is good from a privacy perspective. So the first thing that you're going to want to learn is how to add and remove widgets. And you do all of this in standby mode itself. Honestly, I kind of wish Apple would have created a way for you to change this in settings. I think that would be easier, but I'll show you how to do this and then it should all make sense. So first up, you need to be in standby mode. If you think of all the data that you see on screen now as widgets, this will all make more sense because you deal with them in much the same way that you deal with widgets elsewhere on the iPhone. Tap and hold to enter the edit mode. By default, your standby view is likely going to look like mine on screen now, with two smart stacks, one on each side. To edit the contents of a smart stack, you would tap and hold for a moment on the side that you'd like to edit until you see this screen. You can tap on the minus to remove an item from the smart stack, or you can tap on the plus button to add a widget in, and each time that you add a widget, you're going to have some options available. So let me show you news, for example. As I'm making this video, there are two news widgets available. They might look the same, but they're not. The first is called Topic, the second is called Today. Topic is going to give you news about a topic that you choose, while Today will give you the top news stories in general for that day. I'll choose Topic by selecting it and tapping Add Widget. Then back in the Smart Stack screen, I'll tap on the news widget that I just added, and here you can choose the topic that you'd like to be displayed here. This syncs to your Apple News app. This method of adding a widget, then customizing it by tapping on it works across loads of the widgets in here. Weather, for example, if I add that, you can see that there is only one option and that's forecast, but if I then tap on the widget, I can choose the location that I'd like to show here. The default is your current location, but you might be away from home and want it to show the location at home, for example. I'm not gonna show you all the widgets here, play around with them to find the ones that you like, and the process is identical whether you're doing this on the left stack of widgets or the right stack of widgets. If you tap Smart Rotate on, the stacks will rotate automatically to try and show you the most relevant information at any moment in time. With this off, you have to swipe up and down to rotate through the items yourself. And if you tap Widget Suggestions on, your phone will suggest widgets for you to add. Tap this off and it won't. The bit that I struggled with when I first started using standby mode was how to change from this two-sided smart stack view to some of the other views that Apple showed in their press conference. And it's actually really easy to do. You just swipe left and right when in standby mode, not in standby edit mode. So there are three modes. The first is the dual-sided smart stack mode with a column on the left and a column on the right. Swipe one to the right and you're now in photos mode. 
swipe once more to the right and you're now in clock view. Let's explore the two that we've not already looked at, photos and clock. By the way, if you prefer to have content like this in a written format, there's a PDF version of this video complete with screenshots and you can access it along with all other PDFs I've created, plus future ones for just $5 a month. You can either scan the QR code that you can see on screen now or follow the link in the description of this video to learn more. So here we are in the photos mode of standby. If I tap and hold to go into edit mode, you can see that your phone tries to make this as seamless as possible for you by automatically choosing photos to show here, but clearly you might want some control over this. Your phone will try to use some default albums, featured, nature, pets, cities, and people, and your phone has curated your photo library to decide what to include in here. If you don't wish to include a specific photo album in here, tap the eye icon in the upper left of it, which will toggle that specific album on and off. When not in edit mode, as in when you're in regular standby mode, you can tap on the screen on a photo and then choose view in photos if you'd like to go to that particular picture. And if you would prefer to use specific photos, you can do that by having standby access a specific photo album. You'd create the album first in the photos app, and once you've done that, simply tap the plus button while in edit mode. So here I've got an album that I previously created to be used in a photo memory, so I might use that. I would simply tap on it and that album will get added to my photos in standby mode. The third standby view after the dual smart stack view and the photos view is clock view. This is where the clock shows in full screen in various different styles. You can see that once selected, you swipe up and down to move through the different clock faces. You've got a kind of classic watch face, then a bright colored one with some additional information, and then a world clock, and then two more colored ones. On any of the clock faces, if you tap and hold for a moment and then see this white dot, tapping on that will give you the color options. The color options seem to be different for each one. Some are solid, some are combinations or gradients, so you can really play around with this and find a view that looks good to you. The one I really like is the world clock. I'm in the UK, so we're here pretty much right in the middle, but you can see that we've got other orange dots, one for LA, one for New York, one for Singapore, and one for Melbourne. These are the ones that I've included myself, by the way. You can go into the clock app and change these if you wish, and they'll change here also. Tap on any of them to view the time in that particular location. This could be great if you decide to use standby mode on your desk maybe, and you're someone who works with a team situated all over the world. Siri has been integrated into standby mode and it works, well, it works about as well as it works anywhere else on your iPhone, let's leave it at that. But this is somewhere where I could see myself using it a bit more often. I guess the whole point of your phone turning into a little smart screen is that you can do things hands-free. So for example, I might ask it something like, what's the weather gonna be like in Manchester tomorrow? Or do I have an alarm set for tomorrow? or set a 10 second timer. And the thing that I really like about this one is that it creates an animation to go along with the timer. When finished, you just say stop to have your voice assistant stop the timer for you. If you use live activities on your iPhone, you can now view them in full screen when using standby mode. So the activity that Apple show on their website is for Uber Eats, allowing you to track the progress of food being delivered to you in real time. I didn't order food for this video, but what I did do is pay for some parking for our car. And you can see that in that example at the top of the display is a timer. And when I tap on that, the Ringo live activity opens in full screen. So there you go, that's standby mode running on the iPhone on iOS 17. What do you think? Is this something you're planning on using? Drop me a comment and let me know. And as ever, if you found this video useful, do please consider leaving me a like and subscribing to my channel for more content like this in the future. See you on the next video.